was, it was brought to light that there are real issues, especially along the offensive line. Um, so, I, you know, I think Michigan's got a lot, a lot to look at here, especially offensively. The defense, once again, came away with a great performance, 66 yards, I think, in the second half for Michigan State. But it's, it's overplayed, and, and nobody's talking about that because of the offense. It's interesting to, to see how Michigan State won this game, though, because you, you, you think any game, if you were to give me two unknown teams and say this team's going to turn the ball over five times and the other team's going to turn it over no times, what's the score going to be? You're going to probably pick a higher than a four-point game. Uh, Michigan State's defense bend but don't break. Michigan's offense certainly played into that a little bit. But you got to give credit where credit is due. Michigan State's defense doing what they had to do to stop Michigan from, from getting any of that yeah. momentum oh, yeah, later on Oh, yeah, of course. The they game. played really well. I thought Joe Bocci looked as, as good of a you know a Michigan State linebacker as we've seen in a few years. Um, you know, and, and that's saying a lot because they've had a lot of good linebackers come there. He's going to be a really good player as a true sophomore that he's out there making those plays. The interception he made was a great play. He had a couple sacks. Those guys were fun to watch last night. Well prepared, I think, is how I would say it. I think that, that defense, they came in with a good game plan. Uh, and offensively too, I think you know we talk about Michigan State or Michigan's defense all the time. Michigan State's offense. Brian Lewerke, he had uh, I think it was the most rushing yards of any quarterback besides J.T. Barrett against Michigan's defense. So uh, I think a lot of positives to take away. You look at where this Michigan State team came in this season, and now where we're at with with what we're talking about uh, after this Michigan game. Night and day, the conversation. Paul Bunyan's going back to East Lansing. Uh, Mark D'Antonio has had more success against Michigan than any Michigan State coach has. And, and frankly, any coach against Michigan since uh, we can throw some legendary names out there. Yeah. But his, his record is what it is. I brought it up earlier, and I wanted you guys to give me your thoughts on it. Michigan State talks about this game being more than just a game. Michigan doesn't. Uh, does that have to change? for the narrative in this rivalry to change as far as Michigan getting back on track. Because as long as Mark D'Antonio is in charge, you know that Michigan State's going to come. And plenty of fans from Michigan have expressed that they need to approach this game as a rivalry more than they do. Yeah, well, whether they talk about it or not publicly, it is. Like, there's, there's no doubt at this point that Michigan has a grudge that they they want to try to settle that they haven't been able to and I was flipping through Twitter this morning and saw Josiah Scott uh, Michigan State's freshman cornerback making a comment about never being little brother and I kind of thought about it and the last time that Michigan went back-to-back -back games against him Josiah Scott was in or against Michigan State Josiah Scott was eight years old wow. in second grade so I mean it, Michigan State has controlled this rivalry for a long time they don't they don't have as much to prove as Michigan does the next time they meet on the field yeah. And I, I, you know, I always hate to throw around uh, one team wants it more, or these guys want it more, because I, I think every game, the, the players on the field, they want a win, and they want to go after it. But for whatever reason, you know, you mentioned the little brother stuff. I feel like there, there might still be just that mentality of we should beat them. If you're, you know, as a Michigan player, right. we should beat them. And Michigan State has that mentality of we need to beat them and we we got to beat them and, and uh, you know we were talking about before the show that michigan state as an underdog in ann arbor the success that they've had uh, it, it's been incredible so i i, I you know I, I hate to say that anybody wants it more or there's um you know That's there's that mentality just yeah. because everybody wants right to win. right everyone i'll say this though like uh, the reason a lot of teams shy away from the talking up a big rivalry type game is because coaches are afraid of guys getting overhyped and overexcited and end up blowing it out of proportion no matter what happens in the game and d'antonio has done as good of a job as anybody any college coach that i can remember in in putting it in on a pedestal and, and still delivering. You know, I will say too, I, I was a little surprised with the outcome of this game because you and I both, uh, in the media availability leading up to this game, uh, a lot of the Michigan players were talking about the last time they were in Ann Arbor against yeah. Michigan State and how that game ended and the, the outcome. So I was a little surprised, um, you know, in, in, in just the outcome, how everything played out because of that game. Mark D'Antonio doesn't mince words when it comes to this rivalry. Right after the game, uh, he met with the media, and I had a chance to grab with him one-on-one -on -one, uh, to talk about this rivalry and how much this one meant to him. In the press conference, he did say, this one ranks up there, and he put his hand pretty high in the air. Take a look. Well, two years ago, we know what happened here. Uh, did you get a little eerie feeling with about a minute 20-something left on the clock? I got an eerie feeling with, what was it, 30 seconds or 40 seconds when we were punting it. That's when I got the eerie feeling. 
and uh, said uh, to Coach Tressel, "Okay, last punt, last punt of the world." And he handles our punt team. And uh, you know we've worked it a lot, where it's be this type of situation, and Jake bombed it out of the end zone, so there was no return, and, and uh, you know they had to start from their 20, but they still found their way down the field. So you know it's just tough. You I mean they got a good football team, and you know they're going to keep playing. I know that this this game means a lot to you. So this win in particular, eight of now ten against Michigan. You know it's not so much the eight eight out of ten. Uh, I mean they, yeah that means something in, in winning, but it's the way that we did it. And when I say the way that we did it, the way, the way we bounced back from last year. And, you know, when you have adversity and you're able to write yourself, it says something about your people. It says something about your coaches and your players and, and the organization. And that's, that's what is most important to me that, you know, we're sitting here four and one right now. You know, we won three games last year, went through some things in the off season. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, rise, we rose up. And that's what's impressive to me. How does this help this this season? As you just mentioned, a couple wins in a row now, Big Ten, 2-0. and But this game, I know, means something to you. And, and, and you can carry this moving forward and hope that, as Brian pointed out, when you guys do have success against Michigan, your seasons usually turn out pretty nice. Well, we've, we've said the road road to a championship has gone through here in the past. You know, when you look at uh, 10, and you look at 13, you look at 15, uh, it's always gone through this football team. you got to win. Uh, but... Um, I would say, you know, like Coach Perla says, you know, they all count one. At the end of it all, uh, we need to play well next week. We've got to go up to Minnesota, and, and we've got to concentrate and focus on the moment. So we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, right. Well, there it is. Uh, you know, an interesting guy who, who is so emotional on the field afterwards, going around, running around, hugging his players, participating in the, you know, the celebration with Paul Bunyan. And he saw him dancing so a little bit. He uh, did last dance night in, the, in the locker room. Yeah. He's. he's his skills on the dance floor could use a little work, but yeah, I mean, the great. guy's in his 60s, <laughs> so you know, you gotta, you gotta give him some credit. Oh, he's paid for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, he is paid to win, and now we have to talk about how much winning Michigan State can conceivably do. How does this change your perception of Michigan State the rest of this season? Well, I, you know, I just mentioned it. I, I think the conversation from the beginning of the season to now is completely changed for me, especially uh, this game, I think, uh, maybe a launching board for this team, a little bit of confidence to go into Ann Arbor. You know, we talked about how the game ended two years ago with, with the punt and, and the touchdown off of the punt. This wasn't a fluke for Michigan State. Right. You know, that game, I think a lot of people said, well, you, it took that last play to win. It didn't take that last play to win this time. So I think maybe a little confidence for them. Uh, you do have to go to you, you got Penn State and Ohio State on the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to you have to play those games still. So right. I, those are going to be challenges. But if they can get through some of these other games that they've had, they have uh, Indiana, Minnesota. Um, for me, I, I think this is a big boost for them. I think they're maybe building up right now. I think they're now back to a team that everyone else in the Big Ten needs to be concerned about when they play them. Last year, I think you probably, hit, even heading into the season, if you're an opposing coach looking at Michigan State after the 3-9 season, you're thinking, okay, we can probably put a W next to that one if we're trying right. to look at right. what, what we're going to end up with. That's definitely no longer the case. They're definitely closer to the, the team that was winning Big Ten championships and Rose Bowls, at least in perception-wise, than they were a year ago, or closer to that than they are to what we thought they were a year ago. Go. And I think the biggest, you know, talking to players early this year, especially after winning a couple of those early season MAC games where things looked a little shaky, I think building that confidence was a huge, huge thing for right. them. When they, during last year's season, when they were dropping games three and nine, they were losing games that they could have come back and won, but they just didn't have the. Um, the ability to kind of bow up and, and return from a bad play or something like that. I think that they've established that and the off-season type of coming together that they tried to do and you know, not touching the off-season issues right. here, I mean just on the field basically. Um, I think they've, they've taken big steps and they've started to see that pay off and they're starting to believe in it. The scary thing is this team doesn't lose a whole lot of senior leadership either and they're going to have these guys moving forward. Same can be said for Michigan. A lot of young players, this rivalry only getting started. All right, coming up next though, we got to talk about the Lions. They're an unbelievable team that could be on the precipice of being one of the best teams in the entire league. We'll get into it and Cam Newton right after this break.